Hello, I'm Brad Antle, CEO of Salient Federal Solutions, and I want to welcome you to World IPv6 Day. This is an opportunity for you to learn more about IPv6, highlight the capabilities that it represents and the challenges that it will bring. But here at Salient, this isn't a one-day event, something in which our customers have come to depend on us for and trust in our expertise. The following video will explore some of these issues in more depth. I hope you find it instructive. Thanks for watching. I look forward to working together in the future. Hi, my name is uh, Jeremy Duncan. I work for uh, Salient Federal Solutions. I'm an IPv6 expert here. I've been doing uh, IPv6 and IPv6 security for a better part of a decade with the U.S. government and Department of Defense. Uh, what I really wanted to talk about today was some of the real-world IPv6 threats and uh, attack vectors. So as you can see in IPv4 and IPv6, uh, there's a huge attack surface, uh, especially with a lot of the things we're going to talk about here. Um, but what I really want to focus on is a lot of the IPv6 and uh, UDP-based um, specific attack vectors. So I want to talk about four examples when we talk about this. First example being router, router header type 0. That's a lot of the extension header based vulnerabilities. A second thing is IPv6 tunnels and a lot of the stuff that it can do with them. Third being uh, the IPv4 quad A DNS uh, queries. And the fourth being rogue router advertisements. So that first example as you can see here um, Chinese router was actually sending IPv6, ICMPv6 probes to our router uh, using source routing. Uh, we were able to detect this with a security appliance known as Azure 6 on our network. We were able to see this. And as you can see here, they were sending a lot of botnet traffic via UDP um, using source port 80 to our border router. Uh, the good thing was is that router was not online at the time. Now, had it been online, uh, we would have seen something in this scenario as in those ICMPv6 probes uh, with the source routing um, and then the botnet traffic actually hitting a lot of the uh, specific networks out on the Far East and using our network as that kind of hop-off point. So the second example I want to talk to you about was IPv6 tunnels. Um, a good example of that being uh, how we have a gate on a road and then traffic going around it. Uh, our security infrastructure isn't really ready for IPv6 tunneling. So, it's a transition mechanism, and that's uh, some of the things to watch out for are a lot of the things like Protocol 41, 47 tunnels, um, 6 and 4, 6 to 4, 6 RD, uh, IPv6 and GRE, dual stack light, things like that. Um, and then you get a little bit more complicated when you talk about UDP-based tunnels. Those are things like Teredo, anything and anything tick, TSP, um, and one more to that, that we're going to be talking about a little later, is TCP-based tunnels, things like IP and HTTPS. Um, which is a, basically a Microsoft thing. Um, so we really need to protect against them and actually filter against those tunnels. Um, and you can do that basically with ACLs for protocol 41, 47 traffic, um, IPsec, and some port specific UDP tunnels. Um, but if you don't know the ports, some of those scenarios are a little bit more difficult. Things like Moreto, where you can actually build a, a, a completely different listening port for the application for Teredo or GoGoNet6 actually uses it for TSP, and you can listen on any UDP port, be it 53, 80, 443. Um, and then Microsoft Direct Access uses um, any of those tunneling mechanisms with plus IP and HTTPS, which listens on port 443. A good example of how it's being used right now is, uh, especially when it comes to trade at the, at, at the user's house, if you were to call it that, is they're using uTorrent or any kind of BitTorrent client to actually uh, tunnel whatever they're trying to do, whether they're trying to download music or movies and things like that, they're going over IPv6, which is going over IPv4 being tunneled, which is very easy to use because it's actually on by default um, with the, the more recent uTorrent. And in that, you can basically see when, you, when, when a user starts to download a specific file, you can actually see a listing of generated clients that are using IPv6. You can see this Teredo using the 2001 slash 32 prefix. Another client out there is called Views, it also does the same thing. It makes it very easy for you to do the old checkbox and say enable IPv6 support and uh, prefer IPv6 addresses when both are available, things like that. Now the third example what I want to talk about was IPv4 DNS queries using or IPv4 quad A DNS queries. Um, why that's an issue of course is because it's broadcasting out to the internet that you have uh, however many IPv6 enabled clients in your network. So it comes by default with uh, Microsoft uh, dual stack clients like Vista, Windows 7, Server 2008, Linux, Mac OS. Um, 
And in every uh, consulting engagement we've ever come across, we have always seen Quad A queries uh, being generated by the hundreds of thousands in that enterprise network, leading anyone to believe that you know you have a lot of IPv6 enabled clients in that network. Um, and in the kind of uh, uh, cybersecurity industry, they're considered relatively harmless. However, the DoD and the federal government really like to say, uh, you know, by by regulation, you know, turn that off, disable that. So we we had a, we had basically a scenario called the loaded gun that we talk about when it comes to IPv6 or IPv4 quad A queries, um, and that's. Uh, Simply, you know, remote hacker or some other hacker out of the internet, whether they be from South Africa, um, Canada, Russia, China, things like that, they're going to be looking at all this traffic on the internet and using botnets and things like that to kind of help with that. But they'll see you know, specific organizations now doing things where they see a lot of IPv4 uh, quad A queries generated from that network. Um, and then they decide, well, I'm going to start flooding that, uh, that, that organization's mail server, a lot of spam. And inside that spam, uh, they'll, they'll include things like uh, uh, that malware that actually set up tunnels, um, and they'll obfuscate a lot of the security devices by setting up those UDP-based tunnels, you know, such as Moreto or GoGoNet6. And then all of a sudden, a lot of uh, data gets exfiltrated from that network, and nobody knows any of, that any of that even happened. So, just like I said before, you know, you know, this privileged user out here, Windows Vista 7, things like that, is basically doing a lot of it's surfing the internet and they'll see, you know, thousands of these DNS queries going out on the internet. And that remote hacker, that malicious hacker is going to start sending those, that spam to the mail server and say, here, here, here. And it really only takes that one privileged user now to install that. And in, in that installation, they're setting up this tunnel, whether it be uh, to, you know, basically to that malicious hacker. And all of a sudden, they start I exfiltrating data. And WikiLeaks is a perfect example of that, especially what's fearful in the, in the United States government in that, it's an IPv6 enabled uh, platform. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, rogue router advertisements. So, every one of those IPv6 enabled machines or workstations that I talked to you about, Windows Vista, 7, Mac OS, Linux, they're all listening for router advertisements. And why that's important, because it's a key part of the IPv6 protocol, where they'll listen for whether, whether you know, it heard a router advertisement earlier, or whether it heard it three minutes from now. They're going to do whatever it says. And it's a key part of the protocol. So let's consider that first example we have in that loaded gun scenario where you know, user X downloads that same little pesky malware that we talked about, sets up a tunnel over port 53, and installs now, it's, now installs a basic router advertisement daemon. And now it's sending out RA's router advertisements to the enterprise network of hundreds or thousands of different workstations that are IPv6 enabled. And now they're, they're, now they're basically bootstrapped and listening for instructions from that router, if you will. And now they're using it as a default gateway and a gateway out to the IPv6 internet and nobody knows the difference because it's being tunneled over port 53 from that uh, specific user that downloaded the malware. So uh, read up on RFC 6104 and that includes a lot of details from the IETF talking about uh, the, the problem with RA and using RA guard and things like that. Um, it, but one of the problems is that Microsoft won't fix it, right? So they don't feel it's an issue. Um, it's a key part of the protocol. So really your only mitigations are to use things like Cisco RA Guard on your enterprise network. So that kind of requires you to actually enable IPv6 on the network now. Or use things like dual, uh, DPI uh, inspection engines like Azure 6 on your network, which in a lot of those scenarios will actually protect you against previous things we've talked about. So how can you fix this, right? So um, the, first, the first thing we, we would say is to actually implement IPv6 in your network now. Um, that basically after you plan, design, architect, um, test, um, basically implement and deploy IPv6 in your enterprise network because you're not going to know a lot of these problems that we talked about and things in the future unless you're actually, you know, it's actually in your enterprise. Um, next thing is really to hold your security vendors accountable. Things like your, you know, folks like your, uh, uh, firewall vendors, your IDS vendors, your IPS vendors, um, and say, where, where are you with IPv6? Show me where you are. Where are you with IPv6 security issues? I know the, th the four we talked about. And then get your systems engineers, your network engineers to classes and get them trained up and schooled up on IPv6 and on IPv6 security. Uh, use deep packet inspection, right? So uh, a lot of the tools like Azure 6, you can mitigate a lot of the issues we've already talked about and more 
uh, into your network as well. Now, you also want to basically uh, have an IPv6 cybersecurity plan, and you want to do it now. Uh, things like your tools, your monitoring tools, your uh, prevention tools, your inspection tools, you know, where are you going to use those, how is it going to fit into your architecture, and how is the engineering resources going to work with that. Thank you for watching. My name is uh, Jeremy Duncan with Salient Federal Solutions. Uh, you can email me with any questions you might have at jeremy.duncan at salientfed.com.